Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is your friend Vijay Yadav, back with another video in the Clark University series. As you know me, I make videos around Clark Universities and in this video, I'm going to start something new, which is discussion with our alumni. So one of the guests that I'm bringing to this channel, and in fact, the very first guest in this series, which will be called as Alumni Talks, it's Vashali Menon. I will uh, give her time to introduce herself because it will take a little time for her to introduce herself because a lot of achievements. So yeah, that is a good thing. Now, uh, if you like the videos which I'm making and everything, so do subscribe to the channel because you know, you should subscribe to the channel because I'm putting a lot of hard work in that. So like the video, subscribe the video and everything else. Now let's get started with the video and welcome Vishali. I am so glad that you are finally on this channel and video to share your experiences. So good to have you. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself to small channel that I have right now. People are listening and glad to watch you. Hi Vijay, it's absolutely an honor to be at your YouTube channel. So thank you for inviting me and making me the first uh, official alumni <laughs> to feature in your amazing YouTube series. I've been keeping a track of that. So I love the work that you do. It's really helpful to Clarkies and just anybody who wants to come to the United States, you know, so yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a must. This conversation really helps people. Yeah. Um, so good job. Um, so awesome. hey everyone, my name is Vesh Charlie Menon and I am a Clarky. I'm an alumni of Clark University batch 2022. I graduated um, actually just seven months back. Um, and I did my master's in public administration. So I'm an MPA graduate from School of Professional Studies um, with Alpha Epsilon Lambda Honor Society. Yeah. <laughs> um, and a lot of more titles that I think is for the rest of the video. <laughs> yeah, that's, as I said, as I said, there are many feathers to count. And as I said, I, I'm, I'm sure about it. So that was a very good uh, introduction. Now, uh, Vashali, if you can give me a, like a little profile, like your background itself before coming to your United States, like your bachelor's degree, and then uh, how did you how did you do in your GRE if it was required or anything like that? So basically, your background before applying for masters in Clark. Absolutely, that's um, that's a must. Okay, so I did my bachelor's in uh, political science. Uh, from Delhi University wow. and that was a three-year uh, long undergrad bachelor's degree um, and then shortly after that I was really determined to you know pursue my master's but I wanted to get some work experience in my own home country which is why I decided to join a public policy firm called PLR Chambers uh, it's located in Delhi so I was working I was actually interning with them as a policy public policy intern and they uh, gave me a pre-placement offer to join the company after wow. I graduate. So that's how I got my uh, first job uh, in Delhi. So I did three years uh, with PLR Chambers as a, as a strategy communication executive. Um, so I was working in the marketing and public policy team. So, well, that kind of, you know, I was working with all the international clients. So I had some clients that were actually from U.S., yeah. um, I cannot mention the clients right now just <laughs> yeah. because of confidential information, but uh, I was working with different industries and that kind of got me into me thinking about like, you know, I wanted to pursue something that gives me uh, a, a leeway into marketing and potential public policy making that I want to do in life. So that's how I wanted to, you know, pursue MPA. Yeah. Talking about GRE, that's one thing that I was preparing for, but Fortunately, COVID happened yeah. and uh, they were waving off the GRE scores for that time because, you know, there, there were no centers open. Everything was a shutdown yeah. during 2020 because uh, it was May 2020 when I started to apply for a master's degree yeah. um, in US. So they had asked that, you know, if you don't have a GRE score already, we can, you know, equate that with your work experience. And I already had a work experience. Hmm. So that's how... Um, I did not give a GRE, but I had to give my IELTS score. And my IELTS score was 8. Yeah. Um, so, wow. yeah. So, that's how I got there. Pretty good IELTS score, for sure. So, 8, eight is a good band, actually, to get an IELTS score. Um, so, that's a very comprehensive and very nice background. So, you already had a political science background, and hence, you applied for public administration here at Clark for the master's degree. So, it makes sense. It kind of relates your... Uh, background in under, undergraduate to your master's program right so uh, it's very do you think it's very important for you to have like a relevant field in undergrad and then only pursue the related field in master's because what I've seen in the past uh, semester 
people from non technical back background also apply for technical backgrounds like it data science so they find it a little difficult uh, if they don't have a you know relevant background in the undergrad so have you seen anything like that or of course in your case it's related but what if it's not do you think it's possible for them also to uh, sail through it surely i think surely having an undergrad degree kind of helps you you know uh, enter and transition smoothly into a yeah. master's degree because you have such certain idea certain uh, you know knowledge about the course the structure of how it works but the main problem is that the education system in india is very different than yeah. the education system in united states True. and people don't see that before applying for their masters degree to us they think that it's kind of you know it's easy everybody gets marks and you know it, it won't be a big deal plagiarism as you i'm sure you're aware of this is a big deal in yeah. in the states here right and that's one thing that people take it very lightly so i feel having a knowledge uh, from your undergrad is definitely uh, a good thing to get into your masters with a similar background but it's not the only thing yeah. you know because a lot of people ask me that you're doing marketing but you did mba how do you do that yeah that's because i always love marketing but my forte is political science and public administration yeah you know and i found a niche in it so i was able to like you know get it and i was doing my uh, i took some marketing communication courses as well in my mba degree so it's all about the balance it's all about learning slowly it's not impossible for people you know to go from an undergrad different undergrad to a different masters yes there will be a problem with your visa interviews because yeah. they have a very rigid system so they want to see that you did a yeah. undergrad in a certain degree and you're doing your higher education yeah. in that same structures in that same you know space of field so that's why um having the same similar undergrad would be very beneficial for your visa interviews but it's not the only thing because i feel you can always maneuver around and us education system gives you a very good um element that indian system does not which is to choose your own subjects true so you know you should read the uh, descriptions course descriptions see where you li- uh, you know lie is that something that you can swim around yeah. is it like too difficult you know to understand evaluate that and then take courses because you know you know i was the peer advisor for sps so i've seen a lot of people come with that question like i'm not able to do that i yeah. want to drop the course well that's definitely an option that you can drop the course but why would you pick that option at the first go if you can you know yeah when you were through with some different courses which gives you a similar value but something that you probably will be able to swim through so that's what i feel but like i said it is not a mandatory thing uh, to have a similar course structure between yeah. your undergrad and your postgrad but it would be great to have some knowledge whether it's through an online degree whether it's through just you know reading a couple of books or reading a couple of articles about it that also might help you know? yeah true so that's that's a very good answer actually very valuable so even that's what i have seen in like my last one year of experience here at clark so i have like witnessed a lot of uh students coming from like let's say civil background going for data analytics so uh, yeah, as you said it's a different education system altogether in india as well as us so it's a good thing so there's this thing called as like flexibility to choose your subjects while you are pursuing your masters which is not in india so a lot of students ask that okay how much is the duration is it like uh, strict two years um or is there any decided uh, road map for you to choose or go through the specific subjects in masters so that's what the idea is so it's clear from like if you have heard heard her as well so you can actually choose it's very flexible what subjects you want to do and then if you feel comfortable with it only then you can go ahead and like continue that plus it's a very good option you know since you have this flexibility to choose and play around with your uh, masters program in fact i took some uh, courses from computer science department this time being a data exactly. analyst so yeah that was very that's a, that's a good point uh, if you learn let's say abroad in a country like us so yeah that's the correct thing you know i actually wanted to add one more thing with yeah. you before we jump on to the next question is that a lot of people you know go with uh, different agencies to uh, you know get their masters degree they want to like you know uh, connect with some different agencies within india and they help with the application process and all and well that's a great option that's a great way to you know know which colleges are under your umbrella which colleges that you can actually you know get through you're eligible for but 
I feel like a lot of people do not realize what course they're going for until they get to the college yeah. and they start their first semester. Yeah. So I would really request people to, you know, just read through your courses, True. see if there are different courses, which is, which gives you a similar, you know, outcome, but maybe that's for you. And, you know, even in Clark, there is definitely this MBA that I know a lot of my friends did MBA, but a lot of people who cannot do, let's say, the math- mathematical part of it, yeah. you know, or get stuck with, you know, the, the data part of it, wanted to pursue marketing. Yeah. And there is an option. It's, it's again, something that's similar value. You know, you can do marketing, you can do business with the marketing course as well. But people don't read that when they're applying for a college because they're like just you know, focus on one degree, see options, Yeah. you know, see, read course descriptions, read what subjects they will teach in every semester. And a great part of semesters also is that you can switch your uh, subject within semesters. Yeah. Let's say you don't want to do a difficult subject in the first semester, put it to the third semester, you know, Wow. plan it out that way. If people don't read about it, then it's going to be a problem and they read the same. It's going to be like a shock, I would say, yeah. rather. So, you know, just, just read through yeah. before you make any decision and talk to somebody, you know, maybe an alumina, maybe somebody who's gone to the States, different university, whatever. Doesn't make, doesn't matter if it's the same university or not, yeah. but just talk to people about how did they maneuver the transition from undergrad to master's and what did they do in the first semester? Because that's, that's the ball game yeah. that kind of sets the whole framework for your entire master's True. degree. Exactly. That's why we're making this video because as I said, so there is so much information and knowledge with our alumni because they have already done it. They have been through and they know what they did wrong or probably what they could have done better. And then that's why we're making this video. So you actually know it in advance and probably you can plan your semester, your whole roadmap in a much better way. So again, as I said, it's the first 10 minutes of the video and we have a lot of information. So (laughs) that's definitely (laughs) awesome for them. Uh, again, uh, as I know for now, like you have already given a lot of reasons, but then again, very specifically, why did you choose Clark University for your master's program after like doing such uh, good uh, education in India? Why specifically Clark? Uh, very good question. I've been asked that question of multiple times. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and without sounding as if like I really favor Clark, yeah. I would be very honest about it. Yeah. I applied to seven universities yeah. uh, total in uh, in the United States. And I was particularly looking for something public policy or public administration. Um, out of seven, I got six acceptances and one I got rejected. One yeah. was the University of Missouri okay. uh, that I got rejection from because they were looking for somebody who has an experience in pure public policy. You mm-hmm. know, somebody who is a veteran in reading policy cases and stuff. And that's something I was, you know, I was a fresher uh, back then and I wanted to learn more about it. So obviously I had a mixed experience of marketing and public policy, but not just purely public policy. So that's why I feel like that rejection happened because also they were looking for somebody who has a five-year work experience, which I was not eligible for. You know, I wanted to see my short there. (laughs) Um, But other than that, I got through all the universities. The reason why I chose Clark is because, A, I've heard a lot of good things about their School of Professional Studies. Mm. That's where, you know, the degree that I was going for uh, is taught in that School of Professional Studies. Second of all, uh, Clark University is known for its niche. So it's known for its psychology courses. It's known for its political science courses and some tech courses and MBA. So, you know, it's not that the university in all has all great courses. But it was known for its niche. So I wanted to, so my course comes in that niche, you know. So that was another reason why I decided for Clark. And the last reason where I feel everybody's going to relate to is that Clark University gives a lot of tuition uh, scholarships, you know. Because that's one thing that you want to do. Because I am somebody who's, you know, funding myself, my own education. So seeing an option that's giving me tuition scholarship, uh, giving me an option to, you know, uh, go with different loan options, you know, different payment plans that works for me. So that was one main reason why I saw Clark University as a great option. And not to discount the fact that once I reached Clark, I was glad that I was there because not just the tuition scholarship, that's one segment of it, but the professors, the faculty at SPS is where I was there entirely for the one, one and a half years. I thoroughly enjoyed it. You yeah. know? 
So that's why that's majorly uh, reasons why I wanted to be in Clark. Um, but yeah, I mean, I see. I said to everybody that whoever has asked me, maybe my dream college was different. Yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely. maybe maybe that was different. But the the fact that I was going to the states amidst the whole uh, COVID, yeah. you know. So there were options were less. People were being rigid about application processes. We were not getting responses on the same time. Yeah. And I was on a clock because I was supposed to leave for January twenty twenty one spring semester. So there were some colleges who were not providing my courses in spring. They were providing for fall, mm. and I didn't want to wait for another whole year True. for you know a master's degree. Yeah. So my situation for my dream college was a little different, which is why Clark worked out for me. Yeah. Because they responded on the right time. I got my tuition scholarship. The course matched. I love the course description. Was working out with my career plans, so that that worked out. But had it been a different time, you never know. You yeah, know? definitely. So that's why I keep telling people, don't worry about that. It's it's the time and the situation that worked out for me. Yeah. Hence, I went ahead with Clark. No, definitely, definitely a good choice then. Uh, so almost like the same reasons that I uh, like I decided to actually. Um, I decided to come to like Clark University like on same thing like so I was back in Indonesia when I was actually applying for it so even I was on a clock like I was having a very limited time so uh, Clark worked out for me and then I have already made a video on on this topic like why choose Clark on in like in which I talk a lot about like tuition fees affordability like living uh, nearby to the college because that's a very important factor like living expenses actually uh which is a very important aspect you should look into while choosing a college because as you said you can have a dream college but if it's too expensive to live around live around you might want to think on that because yeah we have been living here it's comparatively cheaper to like other universities so yeah so you can just go and watch that video like why choose clark and you will be like you will understand in more details but of, of course as you heard from vaishali these are the reasons why you choose clark university nice so that was a great answer you already um, like answered my previous two questions like which i was about to ask like what what was the loan process that you took and how was your uh, visa interview probably if you want you can cover like in couple of lines how did your visa interview go because i'm sure it would it would it would have been very like uh, smooth but again a lot of people struggle with you know visa interviews so if you want to give some tips to help our students uh, that would be very helpful uh sure so visa interview actually was quite interesting for me because i had this huge file of all documents yeah you know my dad created for me is like you know you have your tax returns your uh, property papers and everything and uh, nobody asked any proof true exactly yeah exactly <laughs> so that's that was a different thing that i saw in my visa interview because i was fully prepared like every other indian kid you know who's going for a visa interview to get your you know f1 status They didn't ask any documents. Yeah. But I mean, not to not to discount the fact that you should carry the documents yeah. just in case they ask. Yeah. But that's not the reason why they give you the you know visa. Yeah. So one thing that I realized is that you need to be very confident there. It's not about don't be nervous. Yeah. Okay. They will seem like very intimidating uh, personalities because yes, they are the U.S. Embassy immigration officers. Yeah. But you know your story. Okay, and that's what you have to tell them. Yeah, and be as elaborative as you can. Is that one tip that I want to give everyone? People always feel, you know, be to the point. Yeah, be crisp, and you know they will they will love you because you are answering what they asked. Yeah, no, that is a definition of somebody who is not prepared. Mm. You have to be as elaborative so that they ask you less questions. Yeah, if you're putting them on a spot to ask you more questions, true, they're already pissed. Yeah, that's you know? a, that's a good point. Yeah. So if let's say for example they want to ask me, okay, why do you want to pursue a master's in the United States? Now that's a question everybody's gonna get. That's yeah. a very generic question. True. Now where do you start? You tell your undergrad what you did in India, what was your work experience. Now that's the part they didn't ask, but you will still tell them because you're telling them your background, hmm. background history of why you want to pursue in the master's yeah. in United States. So you have to tell your background. So tell about your undergrad, your work experience. Then say, my plan is to pursue a master's in so and so university. I applied to so and so universities, got acceptances from X X universities, and finally decided upon, let's say Clark University. And now, after I'm done with my master's, 
I would pursue my OPT visa and I would, you know, one, sorry, just uh, one more thing before I mention the last thing is that never tell to the immigration office that you want to stay in the United yeah, States true. for life. Yeah. Now that's one thing that's going to get you rejection right, right away. Yeah. So what you would say after saying that, you know, I got my university acceptance. Last thing I want to say is that, you know, I would plan to come back to my country, my home country after my OPT visa expires, yeah. because I want to pursue XX thing in yeah. an XX company yeah. once my master's degree is done. Yeah. Now that actually answers five different questions that immigration officer could generally ask you. Mm. Like, what did you do in India? How would you, you know, why did you choose uh, Clark University? What sort of universities did you apply to? How many rejections did you got? How many acceptances did you did you get? And what is your plan after master's? Those are five questions you answered in one question. Yeah. And the immigration officer is already impressed by you because you made his or her job very easier. Easy. Yeah, true. No, right? that's a very yeah. So don't be crisp. Don't be brief. Be as elaborative and let them stop you. Let them be mm. like, okay, okay, you know, move on. Moving on to my next question. They're like stamping Give and them like, a reason. okay. Exactly. <laughs> Give them a reason to be like, okay, you know what? You're done. Yeah. I'm good with it. Correct. Give them the, you know, the give them the, give them an idea that you're confident. You know what you're doing. You're not going there to just settle down. You're going then go. You're going there to pursue a master's degree, and you will eventually come back to your home country, even if that's not your plan. But you have to give them an idea of that. You know it, right? Yeah. Correct. So that's that's the whole ballgame of being confident. And please. Learn to be more elaborative during your visa interviews. It's going to get you acceptances and your visa will get approved right yeah, there. Definitely. That is, those are three main important points to remember. That's, that's, exactly, that's, what I, that's exactly what I would say. So if someone is going through visa interview process and if you want to like learn all these things, three important points which she, of course, mentioned, I will summarize for you. So be confident, of course, because you know your story better than anyone else. So be confident. You be elaborative, of course. Tell your story convince them probably so be elaborative for me my experience was a little different because i did interview actually in jakarta not india not mumbai so oh, yeah. yeah it is so it's different it, right? yeah it was so different because i used to get questions from people who are doing it from uh, like mumbai so usually it takes a process of two whole days one day for biometrics second day for another interview in jakarta yes. so it was very easy so this could be helpful for someone who's not in india and then you are outside india and then probably you can do your visa interview from that respective country as well because us embassies are everywhere you can go there i did that in my case so i went to jakarta uh, jakarta us embassy the process was just for 15 minutes in the, in for one day so the biometric was wow. done right at the place uh, three questions asked and then exactly the same questions which you mentioned so that's the idea so even I remember I was also being elaborative, uh, confident was a little bit built in. So it went very smooth as well. And it took hardly like 15 minutes. So my experience was definitely different than people who do it in like Mumbai. So of course your inputs are very much valuable in this case. So definitely be confident. <laughs> All right, so moving ahead. Uh, so, I mean, of course, a lot of information you have already given. Uh, now, now you are in Clark University, you are studying your course now. People also ask a lot about like jobs, like on-campus jobs. Off-campus is not allowed, of course. So on-campus jobs, a lot of people struggle to get it. Uh, a lot of people try to do a lot of stuff, you know, to make sure that they get it. So how was your experience getting on-campus jobs? What kind of jobs you did on campus? And how is your experience? And in last, if you want to get, give some tips for people who want to apply for on-campus jobs. Yeah, okay. Um, so I uh, applied to two places. So uh, I'll be honest. So the first first semester, I was not looking for any on campus job. Okay. Uh, to be fair, because I was wanting to give my time to my studies, yeah. and that was the main aim for me was not to get into an on campus because right in the first semester you are getting used you get you're getting used to the you know the city to the university rules you know to your peers to your professors and there's a lot going on especially. During my time, it was peak winters. That was the first time when I saw a minus degree, you yeah. know. We had a bad snowstorm. So we had to, like, you know, juggle between weather yeah. and, you know, you know, work, uh, sorry, study from home system. That was the first semester um, that uh, was very hybrid. So it yeah. was majorly uh, from home, but there were some classes that used to happen in college. So the uh, on-campus jobs were limited in the first semester because, all the, all the people who were studying in uh, Clark University from the previous year were already yeah. working. Yeah. So it was a diff little difficult to get the first semester job. 
So I was apply, I applied to two places in um, during my summer break. Uh, that was uh, one was at the School of Professional Studies as a peer advisor. Yeah. And second was a job, a graduate assistant uh, at ISSO. Um, and I got through both of them, but I first had said yes to the peer advisory uh, position. So I went ahead with peer advisor. Yeah. Um, and the procedure was very simple. It was, um, you know, you have a resume, you have a cover letter. Um, it's It was simple because I already had a resume and I already had a cover letter with me. Because, you know, I was working before, so that was something that was, that was a prerequisite for, you know, corporate anyway, anywhere yeah, in the world. Sure. So I had that ready. Um, but people who don't have the resume or don't have the cover letter, there is a lot of resources in Clark University. You know, go ahead and use that. Uh, even ISSO also helps with that. So just, you know, reach out to people, reach out to your peers, and I'm sure they will figure it out for you. Yeah, so Handshake is like the portal for every job. So I applied on the Handshake portal and, um, they, you know, the good part of Handshake portal is that you see whether you're eligible for the yeah. uh, job or not, because some positions are only for undergrad, yeah. while some for grad students. So that kind of, like, you know, mention everything yeah. there. So I applied there and I think in a week or so I got the response. Um, I was, I had, I think, two rounds of interview um, with the academic supervisor and then um, the uh, the. SPS director. Yeah. So I had different interviews with uh, different people, and then finally I got the job at uh, SPS as a MBA peer advisor. Yeah. And then we had the training sessions, and I was the peer advisor for the MBA course for two semesters then. Okay. So I worked from uh, August 2021 till May 2022. So I was mm. there for almost a year. Yeah. Wow. That's. A so nice that time. was a very good experience for me. And I think one tip that I would suggest anyone who's looking for a non-campus job is that have patience. Yeah. I know it's a little <laughs> difficult. I I know because I've done that. Uh, I have been there, and it's everybody's looking for a non-campus job. Everybody's fighting for it. So just have patience. You talk to people. Network. Ethically network. Yeah. You don't have to go nasty on people. You don't have to you know be that person. Go ethically, you know, talk to people, uh, talk to the person who's written, uh, who is the reason behind the job description, who wants the, yeah. you know, the people to join the job. Talk to this, those people, connect on LinkedIn with them, tell them why, why you are the best fit for that job. So just don't worry, you will get it. Just be patient about it. Yeah. And just one more thing, don't offer an off-campus job because it is not legal. I do not recommend that. And a lot of people believe that it's fine. Nobody's going to get, nobody's going to know. Yeah. Trust me. It's a decision that you would regret in your life to afterwards. Yeah. yeah. So do not offer an off campus. True. That's a, that's a thing to remember actually, because I, I have made a videos previously like on campus jobs, off campus jobs specifically. So of course, even I have mentioned that what are the, what are you putting on stake? Uh, if you do uh, off campus jobs, which is way bigger than why you are here. So of course that is totally out uh, do it on your risk if you are willing to, but I would recommend not to do it. Vashali's Vashali will recommend exactly. not to do it. In fact, I everyone. I completely agree that you are you are you are putting a lot on your on your stake because you're not here for that. You're here for your master's yeah. degree, and that's that's a huge deal that you're here already. Exactly. You know? So don't ruin your opportunity. Don't ruin it because everything is in the legal system. Yeah. You don't want to get in the bad books of the United States government. True. True. And that's a very good point which you mentioned. You know, because that's a uh, thing which even I didn't think that okay first semester you just dedicated for the studies and you did not even try to get the first uh, like on-campus job because of course money is important everyone wants to make it and then a lot of people come with a plan okay they need to have an on-campus job so that they can support their uh, financial background or something like that but again like even if you don't get it in the first semester not everyone is looking for that and probably dedicate some first semester if you can for you know uh, on your studies but again uh, it, it's a subjective thing uh, working on campus can also gain you experience right away when you land here which i did actually so i uh, landed our age of you know my history right <laughs> so of course it's about vaishali right now so yeah i mean these <laughs> things are there uh, having applying jobs on campus it's available on handshake portal you have, must have seen the video by now so i mean it's there but the key is have patience because yeah people should have patience for on-campus jobs you will definitely get it and meanwhile focus on your studies on campus so uh, anyway so uh going through all these overall experience at clark for you like 
involving in a lot of organization clubs a lot of things probably you have done it because i have known you for one semester uh, because when i came here i met you and then we got connected so of course i know a little bit but for our audience like doing a lot of stuff on campus is is also very important because that's what i um, encourage in my videos that okay get involved into organizations connect with people do a lot of extra work so how was your experience in clark how did you manage to like do networking get involved into organizations what all good things have you done so enlighten me okay okay sure uh, so i completely agree with you vijay when you said that you know be more engaged be more present yeah. because that's one thing that everybody kind of neglects yeah when they come to the united states because you know they have other alternative motives you know to like party or you know live the american life and stuff but while that's subjective and that's very temporary you should also focus on doing things on campus yeah. so when i came here for the first semester my my first objective my first aim was to you know get my name across clark university be it different societies be it different buildings how can i get known how can i get my presence in different societies different clubs yeah. uh, different uh, people uh, in the university whether undergrads whether grads whether people who are senior to me how do i do that yeah and so the first thing that i did was i went to the clark university website and i went to their clubs and societies organization page yeah and i saw that clark university has a lot of yeah. societies and trust mm. me it's countless okay and and i saw i made a list of things that i am interested in you know so i reached out to people when you open the website page you see that uh, there's a person's name written there or an email address that you can reach out to so that's what i did i sent an email to all the societies that i was interested in um, i was interested in women in business that's from school of management som yeah that is not sps guys so i went ahead with a different school because why not nobody wants to you know just to what in a particular school explore different things so i went with women in business um and then i also applied for clark amnesty international that is an undergrad society but they also have some grad students for you know members big deal you know like why not go ahead so i went for these two societies at first um and that was my first semester with academics and figuring out that and in total uh, i started as a social media management for women in business ended up as a president of women in business and i was the president for, for women in business for almost one year uh, actually for entire one year yeah. from may 2021 to may 2022 and for clark amnesty international i was a social media chair throughout uh, since i joined till i graduated for one and a half years i was their social media chair and towards my second semester i also joined ama which is the american marketing association yeah. that's again a society uh, by school of uh, school of management som and i was the member there you know so it was it was so interesting to meet so many people from different cultural backgrounds learning about their experiences why they are at clark what are they pursuing in clark you know and not just that but you know working together teamwork things that you know you probably think are easy to do like you know you think you can do teamwork in a group project that is not exactly what teamwork is you know yeah. you work in different environment with different mindsets and working on different projects where you see people you know not paying attention to certain things as clashes but you learn to evolve yeah. you know and that's one thing that clark university society has gave me is that exposure in the american space i interacted with people from america from italy from europe and that's not something that you get in india right so yeah. the societies in india is very different than how you do clubs here yeah. so i would highly recommend doing that and along with those clubs i was very interested to do volunteer work so i was high on volunteering and i know that sounds a lot so not everybody has to do exactly what i did but yeah. i wanted to give my weekends or whatever time i have to some social cause so i started to do volunteering work with american red cross in may 2021 and i did that for almost a year wow. and also during with my during my women in business uh, society work i would make sure that people along with our main objective of the society also contributes to social causes so you know in a way as a group 
as an individual i learned so much that i think i've grown a lot in clark because clark gave me that opportunity to explore nobody gave me any hesitation about you know you're from yeah. sps you cannot sure. be an som but i i'm an sps student i'm yeah. an sps graduate and i was a president for an som club yeah. now that speaks a lot about clark because they give you the opportunity mm. to excel and there is no such limitation so i would suggest everyone to go ahead join clubs join societies cuz that's the best thing that you can do during a semester and that's also a cool thing because you know you get to meet new friends yeah. you interact you network and you party yeah. what more do you want <laughs> exactly wow that is so much because it is so impressive to be honest like even i i did not knew a few things out of that which is very impressive to know and yeah that is true like you no one is limiting you like you can actually be a part of another department's club she was a president so what else can i say like of course like even to be honest like uh when i learned this thing that you being an sps being uh you are so much involved to som other clubs that's exactly what you should be doing which is way more valuable than doing some off campus job and putting your time there because as you said like you are your on campus presence is so much you are involving with a lot of meaningful people you are doing a lot of meaning work being on campus because that's why exactly you are here so utilizing that time on campus in this way is probably what in my opinion as well is the best way to you know utilize your time here on campus so amazing so that's a very good yeah. good good start like awesome being involved in so many clubs doing so many activities on campus and then of course taking care of the prior uh, reason of your academic right you have to excel in that as well so how do you suggest uh, or maybe your tips that how to manage your time with academic like how many subjects do you uh, like ask to choose so that you are able to actually dedicate some time for these kind of activities so how many sub- subjects do you choose per semester then how do you actually plan your whole road map for two years or maybe less than that because people can graduate early so how did that go for you any time management tips uh so i had three sem- three courses per semester yeah. for the first two semesters yeah. and what i did was i had a very hectic last semester yeah so i would tell people to avoid that yeah and you know i wish somebody told me uh that i should take more subjects in my second semester so i basically had four subjects and a thesis oh my and an internship and to find a job in my last oh semester. that's a that's a lot of thing oh okay that's a lot yeah of thing, yeah exactly which is why i was o- overburdened in my last semester yeah. so i would suggest that you know don't go crazy with your first semester you know you are new in the country yeah. you are new to the temperature you know to new to the people around you you're getting comfortable with your roommates with your peers so go easy take your three semesters three subjects per semester yeah. in your first uh, semester when you go towards second semester you're already comfortable in a spot that you know you know you know your subject well you know you've made some friends to rely on you know you know that you have some sort of a family in the states already so go with four subjects in second semester yeah and keep your third semester light yeah because you know you have to find a job after your third semester yeah so hold on one more sec because i finished my uh, my degree in one and a half year so i had three semesters if you are the person who has four semesters then it per- works perfect so you do 3 3 3 and you can do one yeah. uh, in the last semester Correct. and find a job along that and that works exactly ideal for you because you know one subject a semester and all you're doing is applying for jobs getting interviews and you know already experiencing the corporate style you know through the interview system yeah. so if you're not some, someone who has a two year degree go with that plan or if you're someone like me who finished a degree earlier in yeah. one and a half years then i would suggest take less courses in the last semester yeah and uh talking about time management i think um I'll be honest with you Vijay I know that uh, we met only one semester when you joined and I was graduating yeah, yeah. but I'm that person who's not really the kind of person who would uh, you know take a lot of time to party outside yeah. you know yeah. so my time management was a lot around the fact that you know do your assignments go to college do your on campus job yeah. uh, come back home or stay in the library for longer you know midnight studies work with your friends finish a couple of assignments and then you know a similar routine the next day yeah. and you keep your fridays yeah. for party because you know you can party on the friday and saturday and the sunday again you have some submissions so you can you 
time managed there. Yeah, there. exactly. So that's how I manage my time. But I know that a lot of people would think that otherwise because <laughs> some people party more than I do, and yeah. which is a fair bit on their end. No, definitely. <laughs> yeah. The time management comes by the availability of time, right? So if you are wasting your time, of course, there's nothing left to manage. So, exactly. yeah. <laughs> so you have to so, make sure that you spend your time well, as she said, that, uh, of right. course, do your important things first, like at least like submissions, assignments, make sure that that's on uh, time from Monday to Friday, probably, because that's exactly when you your lectures are happening, your submissions dates are due. So taking care of these businesses first and then <laughs> making sure that your stuff is done and then, of course, enjoy. That's the part of your life as well. So even I enjoy. Uh, I enjoy a lot. And then even I'm able to do a few things here and there. So as, as Vishali mentioned, make make sure you're doing your important things first. Have the time to do all these activities first. And then, of course, prioritize your stuff. And then probably, you know, uh, that can help you do a lot of stuff, which is meaningful. Right? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. I agree. <laughs> College life is good. Of course, people have enjoyed. They have done their academics graduations is done i remember you being graduating me taking pictures here and there <laughs> so how did how did your internship journey go because i know that you have done some internship and this is one part which even i am struggling right now i'm actually trying to find inter internships and a lot of students ask this question even before they join that what is the scenario of internship how do you apply when do you apply how early to start so in your experience what kind of internship did you do and then what was your plan to apply that and then a little bit process of your internship very briefly because i know we, we have spoken for a lot but again if you have time uh, you can elaborate on that but yeah that's a very important information that people would love to know sure so i did my internship in my third semester like i said yeah uh, which was the last semester yeah um so i did my internship with the commonwealth of massachusetts the district oh. attorney in yeah. Worcester, um and uh, i was working for i was working with them as a legal intern for three and a half months three and a half to four months um how did i get that internship so i would suggest to talk to the director of internships and director of experimental learning because they know the most about internships in booster or in and around booster so that's how i landed my job i landed my internship so i was actively talking to todd um and he helped me with the procedure so i anybody who's an sps todd bartlett is like the perfect resource for it he's super helpful he's super sweet and what you need for an internship is a, a great resume. Um, and I believe that SPS peer advisors also help with resume uh, resume writing. That's what I did also during my uh, on-campus job. So get your resume checked, um, get your cover letters checked. And uh, I think there's an application process, application form that you have to fill with your, you know, with your employer and simultaneously to you to let ISSO know that if you're eligible for an internship, under your F1 status. Yeah. So as the legal procedure is required, so you, so you do that. Yeah. And once all of that is done, probably in a week or two weeks, span, or maybe a little more, depending on, you know, time schedules of everyone, uh, your internship starts. Um, and during the internship, uh, there's one thing that probably people do not know is that they have to figure out their timesheets along with the university. Yeah. But, you know, that's pretty much the procedure of an internship. I would suggest people to actively use linkedin that's something that i did yeah um i had some interview opportunities lined up outside of my sps resource pool yeah. so i had some intern uh, internship opportunities from linkedin but the reason i went ahead with the one that you know todd suggested was a it went with my course and b sps had a huge list of internship opportunities with them as well yeah. you know so that worked out for me so that's how i did my internship uh with uh you know, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Okay, so uh, what about your main job now? So internship was good, Clark experience was good, and now what are you doing right now? Like after you graduated, how is the main job working for you? How do you apply for that? And then where are you right now? How is life treating you after Clark? People want to know that too. And then uh, in, in last, you can also mention like, is it worth coming to USA for a master's degree? Okay, uh, <laughs> that's a very heavy question, I have to say. Mm. Um, so I'll start with what I'm doing right now. I am currently working as a marketing manager at Astro Investment Management. It is a finance hedge fund company in Chicago. Yeah. So I am in Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> um, I it's, it's been seven months since I've been working with the company. Um, 
So the transition from Clark to, you know, finding a job and then landing a job in Chicago was, uh, was again, a very hectic procedure. Like I said, I mean, everybody who, who probably graduated during my batch feels a very similar vibe that it was, you know, all of us working in the, you know, library, Clark library and trying to get a job and, you know, going for different interviews and stuff. But in all, it worked out for me. I got the job in early March. Yeah. Um, and everything got finally, it took a long time. So I finally signed my offer letter. Everything happened in May. So it takes time to get everything into the procedure. Um, and yeah, I mean, working in uh, Chicago has been really exciting. Uh, I was looking for jobs in Chicago or California. So I was not looking, I was not applying to jobs everywhere in, in the States. Yeah. I was looking for jobs, very streamlined, places I want to be, uh, companies that I want to work for, you know, have a similar wavelength of what they do. So understanding of the job description as well. So I was not applying to jobs everywhere and anywhere. Yeah. I was applying to jobs that I wanted to work for and yeah. the places that I liked staying. So that's how I searched for jobs. Um, and yes, remember how we spoke about how LinkedIn is very important. Yeah. I got the job through LinkedIn. Okay. I, you know, applied for jobs. I was applying to jobs, uh, looking for, um, sorry, I was applying to jobs using LinkedIn yeah. uh, at different portals, but this was a particularly a LinkedIn job application and I applied for the job. I connected with the people who are working in the firm, reached out to the HR, you know, and actually they reached out to me the same day when I sent an email to them, you know, asking about like, how can I talk to you guys about the job application that I applied to? So, well, in all, it worked out well. Um, and yeah, I mean, Chicago has been really good. Uh, it's the place I wanted to be. I'm very excited about it. And Clark and life after Clark is actually fun. Yeah. Uh, it's as fun as, as life in Clark. Yeah. As I say, because I made a great friend circle in Clark. Some of my friends are my go-to people in, right now. Like I actually have so many friends that I talk to on a daily basis from Clark and I'm, I'm thankful to Clark to get yeah. me, you know, these people. So while we're not all in Chicago, I have some people who are Clarkies stay in Chicago so I have my little Clark circle here as well nice um but it's good to know that everybody after Clark has you know landed a good job in different parts of the states um and yeah so it's it's all been good in the hood <laughs> yeah I think it is it's definitely worth coming here for your degree yeah um but I would also suggest that people who think that coming to the United States um and you know getting a job everything's going to be very easy it's not easy true um it is difficult um having a stem degree degree and having a non-stem degree also matters at some point yeah and not that i'm saying because i'm a non-stem degree student yeah. okay so not saying that the stem degrees always work out and you know you get three attempts for you know job applications and getting your visa approval anything could go wrong yeah you know so don't worry about that. You whether have a non-STEM degree, you have a STEM degree. That does not matter. What matters is it. What did you do in your graduation, graduate uh, degree program? How did you excel academically? Yeah. Also socially, and also got a job within the same times same time span. Yeah. Right. So it's not about what STEM, what non-STEM you have. School. Because a lot of people who come from India worry about this thing that my degree is not a STEM degree. You know, and how will I get a job? Yeah. I am a, I'm a non-STEM degree student. Yeah. I'm doing ex I'm doing successfully well for myself in yeah. Chicago. Yeah. Right. So it's not about that. Just don't worry about you know these minor issues. The very minute you land in the United States, yeah. You know, try to focus on your career. Try to focus on the present thing that you have right now, and worry about your jobs in the last semester. Mm. And why I say that is because there are times that you apply early. And you get the jobs, but you cannot join the company. Yeah, yeah. And then there's no point in interviewing for that place. Yeah. You know, because you cannot, that's what happened with me. I had interviewed for one company in January. I got the job and they wanted, wanted me to join the mm -hmm. job, I mean, the company as soon as possible. And I don't graduate for the next five months. Yeah. So, you know, there's no yeah. point, uh, some companies don't want you to like, they don't want to wait for you for five months. True. So I would suggest 
don't worry about in the first two semesters worry about in the last semester you know and think about what you want to do so apply strategically don't just apply everywhere because you have openings yeah. see what you like see what goes with your resume yeah. what clicks with your job prof- a profile what definition that you would you know would live up to do all that research and evaluate and then go for it and i think that procedure that itself makes it worth staying in the united states because the experience that you get here you might not get it everywhere in the world yeah. you know i've worked in india for 3 years and it's going to be almost you know completing 8 months now in in us yeah. um uh, in aster and i think i have enjoyed every bit of it wow. um it's sometimes difficult sometimes overwhelming because the way of working is different here but hey it's all about learning it's all about growing and evolving that's all life after clark is you evolve <laughs> you grow and you have your clarkies your family your friends outside your family you know to talk to yeah and i think it's all good if you if you think of it in a positive way it's, it's all great yeah wow that's that's a very good answer and as i'm saying like it's all so important like of course you have said it so much things maybe casually but it means a lot uh it takes a lot of effort and courage in fact to do everything whatever you do here here in us so uh is it worth it as she said of course it's worth it but again it's subjective um you have to do a lot of work it is worth it but nothing comes easy right so you have to struggle you have to do all the work you have to put in the work uh time everything and then only you can reap the benefits for sure but then again if you are ready to do all those things as you are learning right now it does turn out very nicely for you wow so many so many good information and i am sure that you know we had a good chat we had a good conversation definitely i got to learn a lot of stuff uh to know you better and i'm sure that whoever watched this video you will uh, you are getting a lot of information which probably even i did not have it so <laughs> it's very good uh and this is definitely a good idea to start this new series which i'm planning to which will be called as alumni talks where i am planning to you know in uh, like call invite a lot of alumni meaningful valuable ones everyone because i am i believe in this idea because people who have sailed through they can actually give you the first hand experience and can, and the best advice that you can actually get because and it helps so yeah this is a very good chat and i'm sure this is very helpful so vaishali again like uh, thanks a lot actually for doing this because i know your time is very valuable and then taking time out of your day to do this uh, for us is definitely meaningful and i'm sure people are going to enjoy this so thanks a lot for doing it and uh, i hope to stay in touch with you and see you someday in chicago absolutely thank you so much vijay for having me it was a delight to talk to you and also help with everybody who's you know either applying to clark or are actually in clark and you know applying for jobs right now at every point in clark i mean i'm 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 always available to people i have spoken to a lot of people who joined clark quite recently yeah um so yeah i'm there to help if anybody wants to talk send me a message on linkedin uh i will try my best to respond as soon as possible but like vijay said there's sometimes that i'm not able to respond yeah it's not so possible yeah i understand that apologize definitely. on that end yeah. but uh, yeah i would i would uh, i'm always there for clarky so feel free to you know uh, connect with me and you can always you know take reference from my linkedin profile as to how that should look like yeah uh, and yeah i am there for you thank you for having me again i love that i love that i would leave your uh, like uh, social media accounts like linkedin's uh, probably a uh, gmail if you allow or something like that uh, for people if they want to connect with you so they can actually reach out to you on linkedin which i will be sharing in description as well as on the screen so you can uh, add her follow her because definitely a meaningful connection so that's a good thing and uh, again thank you very much for uh, making your time and every one of you thanks for watching the video i hope this was helpful in fact i know this was helpful so uh, thank you for watching the video and uh, wait for more more of these to come alumni talk series is something that i'm very excited about uh, with all the rest of the videos that i'm doing uh, this will be something that will happen like on a constant basis so subscribe to the channel if you like the content and then leave a comment if you learned something or if you have something to share feedback or any, anything else and uh, let me know if anything is there as well as to vaishali again thanks for watching Have a nice day ahead. Thank you Vaishali for doing all this. Thank you Vijay. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care guys.